Hi, Misha. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to speak to you today. How are you? I'm well. Hello, Sarah. I hope you're well, too. I'm great. Thank you. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to yeah. this incredible documentary, Billion Dollar Heist. What can people expect when they watch it? Uh, they can expect uh, a bit of a shock as to just how much money can be stolen from what you would have thought was a well-protected bank because it's a central bank. It is the Bank of Bangladesh. And uh, these guys came within a couple of hours or so of pulling off a heist of a billion dollars, which is just, I mean, you know, you remember when we had the, well, you won't, you were far, you were far too young, but the great train robbery in which they got a few million quid. And that was absolutely sensational at the time. And even if you look at things like Ocean's 11 or Ocean's 12, you know, they get away with 10, 15 million dollars or whatever. What you're going to see is, is how cyber has just turned the scale of criminality in a way that was unimaginable even 10 years or, so, or 10, 12 years ago, that you can get away with a hell of a lot these days. And obviously having back in 2016, but not that many people know about it or know that these sorts of things are possible. Why was now the right time to kind of make this documentary about it? And, and why do you think it is that things like this perhaps aren't part of the cultural consciousness? Uh, Sarah, it's a very good point you make here because uh, within the sort of cyber security and cyber crime researcher community, the minute this happened, everyone was talking about it because it was just so gobsmackingly large, the whole thing. And it was extremely carefully planned. I mean, this would have been planned uh, well over a year in advance. And the, the, the timing of how they actually did it was really smart because it was a holiday in Bangladesh on Friday. It was a Saturday in New York. These are all relevant places to the, the whole thing. On Saturday and Sunday, uh, nobody was engaged. And on Monday, it was the Chinese New Year, and the money was laundered through Chinese-speaking uh, Chinese speaking communities um, in uh, the Philippines in particular. So it was really well organized um, from, uh, from that point of view. But because it's a cyber crime, um, it, it, cyber, it's very difficult getting people to get interested in cyber crime because it's all about nerds sitting at a, sitting at a keyboard and, um, and just typing away and a load of figures appearing on the screen. And so it's really difficult to get people engaged with cybercrime because it's just about figures and laptops uh, and, and that sort of thing. And so when um, General Films approached me, the producers of the film, and they said they'd like to do something with Dark Market, a book I wrote on cybercrime, I said, well, that's already under that's already under contract for someone. So they said, well, what's a what's an interesting crime that's happened in cyber? And I said, well, the biggest of all is the is the Bank of Bangladesh. And um, I assumed that everybody knew about it. And as, as we've been making this documentary, it becomes clear to me that very few, if anybody's heard about this, apart from those who engage with it professionally. And so I think with the introduction of artificial intelligence, which is going to have a big impact on crime as well as everything else in a negative sense, unless you're a criminal, in which case it's a very positive sense. Um, now is the time for people to realize just how huge this issue is of cybersecurity and what can happen to you if things go wrong. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could say a few words about your own background and what you've done as a journalist, broadcaster and an author um, and, and how you sort of collaborated with the director, Daniel. Um, and I know you obviously you, you had your McMafia book was, was adapted into a BBC series. So you're obviously no stranger, perhaps, to this this crossover world from from stuff you might be writing about and to putting it onto screen. So how did that collaboration come about and what was the process like? Yeah, I, I confess, I also... Uh many, many years ago, I, my first degree was in drama. So I'd done quite a lot of acting and, and I've read a lot of scripts and read a lot of plays and that sort of thing. And so this is not a world that I was 
unfamiliar with and then of course Mc, mcmafia happened as as you said and that was a that was a a, a big production of my non-fiction book being made into a into a feature drama for the bbc so that was um that was very exciting i was put together with dan um uh, dan gordon the director by uh, gfc by the production company um and dan dan is an incredibly gifted director um who has already made some great films uh, on hillsborough on the issue of of pedophilia in football and a, a terrific film called the australian dream winner of um many awards and a very straight guy he's from sheffield and uh it's one of the reasons why he did the film on the hillsborough disaster is because he's a big sheffield wednesday fan um and uh, he and i hit it off straight away and i just it really helps i mean this was with the case with mcmaffia as well if you feel as though somebody speaks your language and vice versa collaboration with them if you understand that your job is not directing the film i don't know anything about i couldn't direct my way out of a paper bag but that i'm there for dan to do the best that he can then i will and um vice versa so we had a we had a great time with the uh, the filming and um you know and the way that he put it together particularly with the animation i think which works extremely well um uh, i i hope it's another hit for him obviously i'd like it to be a hit for myself but dan deserves it more than i do mm. Well, yeah, and thinking about kind of the way the content of it and the way it's put together, because, of course, it's focusing in on, you know, sort of the mechanics of this particular heist and sort of the weekend and how that unfolded. Um, but it's also giving audiences that broader context of understanding kind of the scale of the threat that we're seeing from in terms of cybersecurity um, and also like other things that have happened. And then, like you said at the beginning, perhaps people do struggle with the tangibility of it all. And I guess the animations and the live action kind of reconstructions perhaps help that, the people to visualize it better. It, it's the, it's, it's the, you're absolutely right, because it's the only way you can do it. You've got to think really creatively when you're doing a, a, anything that involves uh, involves cyber and and that that really means sitting down and thinking how is this how are people going to respond to this immediately and also understand where it impacts on their own lives um uh th there are also some very nice bits in the film where you realize that the criminals are only human as well because the reason why they didn't get away with a billion dollars and only got away with the, uh, around a hundred million which you know is uh, <clears throat> nothing to sneeze at if you're a criminal um the only way they didn't is because they are subject just like we are to human error and so one of the great things in the film is they misspell the word foundation and you know they put they put uh, months and months and months of work into getting every little detail right, understanding how the network in the Bangladeshi bank works, understand how the SWIFT network, the international payment system works, and then they bugger it up because of one spelling mistake. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> And what do you hope people will take away from watching it? Because I do think this kind of, you know, like keeping people on the edge of the seat, you know, like kind of the thriller, more entertaining aspect of it. Yeah. It is very educational about understanding. That, that's absolutely right. What, what people know, and I think we mentioned it at some point in the film, one of us does, one of the people who are being interviewed, uh, was that you can protect yourself against 96, 97% of attempted cyber attacks by having good digital hygiene by just behaving properly and not doing anything really stupid. If, however, as in this case, somebody decides to target you specifically, then, and they're good at what they do, then there's probably nothing you can do. The only advantage is, is what is the point of attacking individuals 
where you know you attack an individual and you can make their life a misery and you can maybe get a few thousand quid out of them but it's the the real professionals are going to go where the big money is uh, and so the only lesson i'd say that people need to take away from this is for god's sake be careful with your computer because people think that they have an intimate relationship with the computer that it's just them and the screen and you know and other than that you're in a safe space it is probably the least safe space in the entire world and god knows who who is watching you or me you know the whole time as you're tootling away on your keyboard I'm out of time, but just very quickly, can you tell us what else you might be working on? This other adaptation or another? Oh, uh, I'm not so much doing an adaptation at the moment, but uh, there's a. Uh, if we're going to make the green transition, uh, if we're going to save ourselves from climate Armageddon, which is, you know, frankly, 50 50, we're going to have to dig up more of the earth than we have done over the past 75,000 years in order to get at the critical raw min minerals, as they're called, things like lithium, but also weird things called rare earth metal metals. We're gonna have to do all of that in the next 10 years. And uh, so I'm working a little bit on how we're going to dig up the earth and create a whole set of new problems for ourselves. Oh, wow, that sounds fascinating. <laughs> well, uh, can't wait to see the out outcome of that, but also for everyone to have the chance to see Billion Dollar Heist. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Lovely to chat to you. Thanks. You Bye. Too.